In this video, we'll go over the rules for naming ionic compounds, and we'll show you some examples. We'll start with binary ionic compounds. Binary means these compounds are made up of only two elements, a metal and a nonmetal. In the name of a binary ionic compound, the metal name is written first, and we just use the name for the metal that's on the periodic table. The metal name is followed by the non-metal name. We look up its name on the periodic table and change it so it ends in the letters IDE. Let's do a couple of examples. What's the name of the compound RB2S? We find the two elements, rubidium, number 37, and sulfur, number 16, on the periodic table. The metal name is rubidium, and the non-metal name is sulfur, but we change the ending on sulfur to IDE, so its name is sulfide. At this point, we check the number of possible charges on the metal. We see that rubidium has only one possible charge, so it's monovalent. When we're dealing with a monovalent metal, we don't need to worry about Roman numerals charges or numbers of atoms in the name. So the name of this compound is simply rubidium sulfide. Let's do another example. What's the name of the compound Mg3N2? We find the elements on the periodic table. The metal, magnesium, is number 12, and the nonmetal, nitrogen, is number 7. The metal name is magnesium, and the nonmetal name is nitrogen. But we change it so it ends in IDE, so it's now called nitride. Again, we check the metal magnesium, and we see it has only one possible charge so it's monovalent. Therefore, we don't need to worry about the subscripts 3 and 2, the charges, or Roman numerals. So the name of this compound is simply magnesium nitride. Things get a little more complicated when we have to name a compound that contains a multivalent metal. Multivalent metals are metals with more than one possible charge. These metals are usually found in the middle section of the periodic table, and are called transition metals. Here are a few examples. Notice that all of these have more than one possible charge, and they're shown on the top right of their box. When a compound contains a multivalent metal, we must specify which charge the metal has using a Roman numeral. Let's go through an example question. What is the name of the compound Cr2O3? We find the elements chromium, number 24, and oxygen, number 8, on the periodic table. We know the name will be chromium oxide, so we write chromium and oxide down here. Remember, it's a binary compound, so the nonmetal's name, oxygen, is changed to oxide in the compound name. Looking at the metal chromium, we see that it has more than one possible charge, so it's multivalent. Therefore, we have to work out which charge on chromium is used, and what Roman numeral in the name will be. So that's why we left a space after the name chromium, so we can put in the Roman numeral once we know it. The formula tells us we have two chromium ions and three oxide ions. The periodic table tells us the charge on each oxide ion is negative 2. Going to the chromium, we don't know whether we would need to use 3 plus or 2 plus for the charge in chromium. To find this out, we work backward from the oxygen. We find the total negative charge by adding up the charges on the three oxide ions. 3 times negative 2 is equal to negative 6. And because the total positive charge and total negative charge have to add up to 0, the total positive charge must be equal to positive 6. We can use this to find the charge on each chromium ion. We have two chromium ions, so if two of them add up to positive 6, it means that each chromium has a charge of positive 3. So the charge on a single ion of chromium is positive 3. And because the Roman numeral indicates the charge on a single ion of a metal, the Roman numeral we use here is 3. So the name of this compound is chromium 3 oxide. Now we'll show you how to name ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. With the compounds we're dealing with in Science 10, we can state that if an ionic compound has more than two elements, 
then it can be assumed to contain one or more polyatomic ions. You can recognize an ionic compound because it always starts with either a metal or the ammonium ion, NH4. Because the symbol for every element contains one capital letter, you can tell how many elements a compound has by counting the number of capital letters in the formula. For example, CuSO4 has three capital letters, so it has three elements. The elements are copper, sulfur, and oxygen. Because CuSO4 has more than two elements, it must contain a polyatomic ion. Once we know that a compound contains one or more polyatomic ions, we just locate that ion, or those ions, on the ion table. Remember, before, when naming binary compounds, the name of the nonmetal had to be changed to end in IDE. Something very important here. When a polyatomic ion is in a compound, the name of the polyatomic ion is not changed in any way, as it is added to the compound name. For example, the polyatomic ion ClO- is called hypochlorite, so NaClO is named sodium hypochlorite. The polyatomic ion NO3- is called nitrate, so KNO3 is named potassium nitrate. Notice no changes in the names of the polyatomic ions. And the polyatomic ion MNO4- is called permanganate, so ally MNO4 is simply named lithium permanganate. Let's do a couple of examples of naming compounds with polyatomic ions. What is the name of the compound BaClO4 in brackets 2? We find the element barium on the periodic table and the polyatomic ion ClO4- or perchlorate on the ion table. Barium has only one possible charge, so it's monovalent. Because barium is monovalent, we don't need to worry about the brackets and the two outside the brackets. We can assume the formula is correct. Monovalent elements don't need Roman numerals, so we don't need to work with charges on ions. We simply use barium and perchlorate to create the name. So we just use barium without a Roman numeral as the metal and add the name of the polyatomic ion perchlorate without changing it. So the name of this compound is barium perchlorate. Let's do another example. What is the name of the compound NH4HSO3? You may want to pause the video and try this one on your own first, then resume the video and check your answer. If we look at the formula and the ion table carefully, we can see that this compound is made up of two polyatomic ions. They are NH4 and HSO3. Looking on the ion table, we find their names, ammonium and hydrogen sulfite or bisulfite. We can use either hydrogen sulfite or bisulfite for the HSO3 minus. Notice here that sulfite is spelled with an F. In some textbooks, especially some Canadian ones, it's spelled with a PH or S-U-L-P-H-I-T-E. Either spelling is acceptable. So the positive ion is ammonium and the negative ion can be called either hydrogen sulfite or bisulfite. Using either name is acceptable. Therefore, the final name of the compound is either ammonium hydrogen sulfite or ammonium bisulfite. Either name is acceptable. Here's another example. What's the name of the compound SnCl3 in brackets 2? We see that this formula contains three capital letters, so it must contain a polyatomic ion. We find the element tin, number 50, on the periodic table, and the polyatomic ion carbonate on the ion table. We see that tin is multivalent, so we will need to find the charge the tin ion has in this compound and express it as a Roman numeral. So the preliminary name is tin carbonate, and we leave a space after the word tin for the Roman numeral once we find out what it is. Looking at the formula for the compound, it tells us we have one tin ion and two carbonate ions. So we write these in here. We know the charge on carbonate is 2 minus, so we include it here. We don't know the charge on the tin yet. We find that by working backward from the carbonates. The charge on each carbonate ion is negative 2. Because we have two carbonate ions, the total negative charge 
is 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. The total positive charge has to be equal and opposite, so that the total positive and negative charges add up to 0. Therefore, the total positive charge must be positive 4. Because there is only one tin ion in the formula, and the total positive charge is positive 4, the charge on the single tin ion must be positive 4, which we write as 4 plus. So because the charge on a single tin ion is plus 4, the Roman numeral after the name tin is 4, or IV. Note that brackets are always drawn around Roman numerals in compound names. So the final name for this compound is tin-4-carbonate.